Mary Todd Lincoln had a taste for the finer things in life. Growing up in a wealthy family, Mary had high standards for how she presented herself. Appearances were everything, and unfortunately for Mary, keeping them up was a costly endeavor. Her shopping became an obsession, and Mary fell under the spell of compulsive shopping. Though Lincoln would not take office until March of 1861, Mary Todd Lincoln found herself under constant scrutiny for where she went, what she purchased, and what she said from November 1860 forward. Mary, who came from a well-to-do family, understood the pressure she was under and wanted to succeed at fulfilling the role of First Lady. Mary Todd grew up in Lexington, Kentucky to a wealthy family. At the age of seven, she lost her mother, and shortly after, her father was remarried. Mary, as well as her six siblings, felt emotionally isolated from their father's new wife and family. Despite this, they still received the benefits of an upper-class lifestyle and a sound education. There were so many children, fifteen from Robert Todd's two marriages, that even though they were well off, a single sewing woman could not make everything the family needed. As a result, Mary and her sisters learned to make some of their own clothing. They followed current fashions, so their creations were up to date and took pride in their work. Mary married Abraham Lincoln in 1842 and settled in Springfield, Illinois. During these years, Mary was known for her frugality. Money for the Lincoln family was tight, and Mary was careful about what she spent. Mary Lincoln enjoyed a previous glimpse of Washington, D.C., when she and the children joined Lincoln for several months during his time in Congress. As a member of Lexington, Kentucky's upper class, she understood what it would mean to move in Washington's social circles. Mary knew some people thought Abraham Lincoln's Western roots meant the new first family lacked social sophistication. It was important that her wardrobe convey that she was educated, well-mannered, politically informed, and patriotic. Before the family was due in Washington, Mary traveled to Chicago to shop for the fine clothing that was expected of a woman in her position. Merchants were delighted for the business, and everywhere she shopped, they extended credit to her. Having the president's wife as a customer was good for business. Once her family occupied the White House, Mary often traveled to shop for items for the house and things she felt she needed for her wardrobe. Mary frequently made trips to New York and Philadelphia to order damask, wallpaper, carpets, and curtain materials, most of which was brought over from Europe. She was urged to buy imported goods. It was important for foreign countries to see that the North would continue to trade with other countries. To some extent, this made the wearing of rich clothing seem like a patriotic duty. But what started as a necessary part of serving as First Lady soon slipped into buying habits she couldn't control. She hoarded old possessions in innumerable trunks and boxes, keeping even outdated dresses and bonnets she had bought from Springfield. The charge accounts for her purchases amounted to appalling sums, things she could never use or pay for. A Washington merchant sent a bill for 300 pairs of gloves ordered in four months. At A.T. Stewart's New York department store, she bought furs, silks, laces, jewelry, $3,000 of earrings and a pin, and 5000 for a shawl. A series of expenditures that steeped Mary Lincoln in scandal was her redecoration of the White House. Despite the specter of war, Congress allotted $20,000 for her to use to refurbish the White House. Old receipted bills in the National Archives show the vast array of objects bought. There was every possible item of furniture for Victorian interiors, bedsteads, chairs, sofas, velvet hassocks, bell pull rosettes and cords, washstands, ewers and basins, covered chamber, foot bath, and padded spring mattresses. With all her purchases, Mary overspent the allotment by $6,000, which infuriated the president. He exclaimed to overspend the allotment at a time when the poor soldiers could not have blankets was wrong, and he covered the excess expenditures out of his own pocket. 
Although her shopping sprees drew criticism for their appropriateness during wartime, the New York Herald admirably reported that Mrs. Lincoln came to the Metropolis, visited the most modish stores, and displayed such exquisite taste in the selection of the material she desired and of the fashion of their make that all the fashionable ladies of New York were astir with wonder and surprise. She willingly accepted the duty of fashion leader. She loved dresses themselves. It wasn't about vanity or judging others. Many of her friends and her husband were not into fashion. She liked to dress up and dressed loudly, which people found snobby, annoying, or tacky. Mary's obsessive attention to details of her attire were not entirely misplaced. Newspaper reports of her evening receptions invariably commented on every aspect of her apparel. Mary confided to a friend, I must dress in costly materials. The people scrutinize every article I wear with critical curiosity. Feeling scrutiny from the media as a fashion symbol, she felt the need to spend exorbitant amounts of money on clothing and accessories. Mrs. Lincoln's seamstress and friend, Elizabeth Keckley, explained her spending. In endeavoring to make a display becoming her exalted position, she had to incur many expenses. Mr. Lincoln's salary was inadequate to meet them, and she was forced to run in debt, hoping that good fortune would favor her and enable her to extricate herself from an embarrassing situation. She bought the most expensive goods on credit, and in the summer of 1864, enormous unpaid bills stared her in the face. Mary said, The President glances at my rich dresses and is happy to believe that the few hundred dollars that I obtain from him supply all my wants. If he is elected, I can keep him in ignorance of my affairs. But if he is defeated, then the bills will be sent. The death of her son Willie in 1862 further intensified her debt as she went on clothes shopping sprees to nullify her grief. By 1864, the bills for Mary Todd's shopping trips, now more personal, were catching up with her. She did not have a long-term plan to pay for the items she bought. It was getting harder to cover up her expenditures, and she was frightened. Her debts had run up to $27,000, nearly 400000 in today's money. As her debts grew, Mary looked for ways to hide her expenditures in other budget categories, which angered all involved. It infuriated President Lincoln and caused many arguments and problems in their marriage. Desperate, Mary would share political secrets with officials or promise political favors in exchange for loans. She went as far as selling excess manure purchased to fertilize White House grounds and firing mansion staff to save money. Mary knew that if Abraham was re-elected, her lines of credit would not come due, and she might have an opportunity to continue her efforts of creative accounting. She was becoming aware that if he lost, she could bring on them financial ruin. I do not know what would become of us all. To me, to him, there's more at stake in this election than he dreams of, Mary stated. After the death of President Lincoln, creditors descended upon Mary. The previously granted unlimited credit was now due. She was granted a one-time pension payment of $25,000 by Congress but it wasn't enough to cover her debts or spending habits. Mary resorted to selling many of her personal belongings. She even enlisted Mrs. Keckley in 1867 in an attempt to sell her clothes anonymously in New York City, as well as received help from her supporters to stay afloat. Though she eventually paid off her debts, swirling rumors, and the actions she took to secure personal loans ruined her reputation and relationship with many of her friends. After leaving the White House, Mary spent her time traveling in the U.S. and Europe, and continued shopping for herself, as well as sending numerous items home for her family. Travel and shopping were the two elements in her life that seemed to make her happy.